Hey everyone, I know I usually do a science video, but I'm doing something a little different today. With apologies to Professor Rich in advance, I decided I would try my hand at a little history and relate it to a story in the news that I found to be quite interesting. Uh, it was covered fairly widely, at least on TYT, I know it was covered, that Putin, while attending a ceremony in Russia, had his hand kissed by a member of the Orthodox Church. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a clip of it. Aside from the clip being pretty funny, I also found it as not that surprising. And there are kind of two ways you could look at it. You could see this as a member of the clergy bowing his head to Putin, or you could see it as a member of the clergy taking a stand of sorts against a ruler who's acting less like an elected official and more like a czar. Uh, to understand this a little more, let me just talk a little bit about the relationship between the church and the head of state in Russia. Ivan the Terrible, as the first Russian Tsar in the 16th century, took control of the Orthodox Church. He didn't create a partnership so much as he made them subservient to himself, as well as many others. He committed a lot of terrible deeds, but with his relationship to the Church, it was pretty much demanded that they were serving him. Now, they were not specifically kissing his hand, or at least there's no evidence that I've found that they were kissing his hand, but as recently as 1655, it was shown that a traveling priest would be expected to kiss the sword hand of the Tsar, and would then receive a reward of some kind of imperial gift. Now, Peter the Great was the very first emperor of Russia, and he took charge of it in the early 18th century. Now, before he took charge, the Orthodox Church had gained a little more influence within the state, and what he did was replace the top-ranking clergy with priests that had been trained in Kiev, and ones he knew would be subservient to him. This is another instance where the Russian ruling power decided to take control of the church and use its influence to, by extension, control the people. Now, religion was famously outlawed in the early 20th century when the communist regime, led by Lenin, declared it superstitious and unscientific. They actually slightly misread Marx when they referred to it as an opium of the people and simply got rid of it. Or they probably should have done is remove the condition which causes people to be religious, which is usually poverty and strife, and that was a little closer to what Marx actually wrote. But that aside, you'll see that this image of Stalin actually depicts him as almost a saintly figure. And even though the Orthodox Church, along with every other religion, was outlawed within Russia, during times of crisis they were still used as a tool of propaganda. Most notably during World War II, Stalin would use them to create strong feelings of national pride. And it showed now after the fall of the Soviet Union, religion was openly practiced within Russia again, and of course that meant a tremendous boom in the membership of the Russian Orthodox Church. Now it should be noted that there is a very strong relationship between the church and the FSB, which is the Russian intelligence service, which was formerly the KGB of the Soviet Union, of which, uh, of course, Putin was once a member, which should be noted. Now, in 2002, the Church of the Holy Wisdom was reconsecrated with a very big ceremony. And at that ceremony, the FSB director, Nikolai Patrushev, who you can see pictured here, was presented with an icon of his name, St. Nikolai. This is a fairly open and blatant admission that there is a very strong tie between these two organizations. Now, I think that little recap of history as a great way of showing you that it's been a pretty rough ride for the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, they've been constantly controlled and manipulated by the head of state. And 
it's shown that while many people often assume the separation between church and state is something to prevent government from being overrun by religion, at the same time, it also should mean that religion will not be overrun by government. Obviously, it's more often the former case than the latter, but nonetheless, it's important that both institutions are able to function separately. And I say this as no big fan of religion, but nonetheless, it should not be a tool for the state. And to give you a very recent and relevant example, the recent imprisonment, or the I should say the sentencing of Pussy Riot to several years in prison for daring to speak out against Putin. I know the official ruling was hooliganism and I can't remember the exact phrasing at the moment, but it was a hate speech or something along the lines of interfering with religious practice, which is dubious at best and almost certainly a method of Putin using the church to silence political opponents. Basically, they're his cover. And this, in this case, I mean, it would be very nice to look at that little clip of Putin getting his hand kissed as, you know, the truth in Russia. That is, the church is gladly serving as the lapdogs of Vladimir Putin. But that might not be the case. And until we have any real evidence, one way or the other, it could be a simple case of the church being controlled and forced to side with a government it would otherwise have no interest of being a part of. And that little kiss on the hand may instead be a political speech showing that as of right now the church feels as though it must kiss the hand of the new czar. And what a terrible czar he is. So that's about all I have for you today and thanks for watching.